Energy is a relative newcomer into the power adapter market, but that is only in brand name. The company is backed by the well-known brand Delta, who makes power adapters for heaps of devices and has been around for a very long time. We will see if this long-term experience has made Energy better at making USB power adapters and where they stand out as the best and the worst. If you are new here, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? These videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live, as well as the super button, thanks to my current patrons. First up is the stick-like adapter. The adapter has a single USB-C port all the way on one end, and a 60 watt output rating capability. It makes claims of the smallest, but I'm not so sure on that. Maybe in one dimension, but volume, no, especially if you take into account the heaps of packaging. This power adapter does come with a USB-C to C cable, but no label, so I assume it's a 60 watt capable cable. This will We'll go into round four of USB cables. There's a giant ferrite on this cable, so the power adapter might be small, but the cable is bulky. I've had this adapter for a while now, so my review is certainly later than others. This adapter has lots of modes of operation. It can do fixed output voltages per the USB power delivery 3.0 specification. The USB-C port can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts. This adapter has no programmable power supply capabilities, so no Samsung super fast charging. The cost for this adapter is 40 US dollars, which is Expensive, but not crazy out of line for 60 watts. The adapter turned off when overloaded at 74 watts, which is pushing it a little bit far, but at least it turned off. The issue here is a 65 watt 3 amp rated cable might not be up to the task of extra amperage, so things might get a little warm. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is low and quiet, a real win. The general performance of this adapter is bad when taking into context the lack of power factor correction though. The adapter meets the Department of Energy 6 requirements, the requirement to be efficient in real power terms and use low idle power consumption. The voltages were all strong, and within the USB power delivery specification. Nice. Next is the C6 Duo. As the name suggests, it has two USB-C ports. The adapter has a two USB-C port and 63 watt output rating capability. The packaging is better on this one, but still a lot of extra plastic. No cable, which saves a lot on the weight and packaging bulk. This adapter has lots of modes of operations. It can do fixed output voltages per the USB power delivery three specification, and the C port can deliver five, nine, 12, 15, and 20 volts, and it can also deliver a programmable power supply output voltage of 11 volts at up to 30 watts, so moderate charging levels. The cost for this adapter is $58, which is expensive for what you get. The power is shared between the ports in an interesting way. The device does divide in two, but it only renegotiates the power delivery if you ask for power delivery, so a higher than 5 volts on that second port. Different. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 67 watts, which is a very reasonable overload limit. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is quiet and low. Another win. The general General performance on this adapter is bad though. When taking into context the lack of power factor correction, when looking at the power factor, it just stays low. The real power efficiency is great, but it has issues with crazy high peak currents. See the graph. These waves ideally all look the same. Note that this 60 watt adapter is using almost the same VA or apparent power as a 150 watt adapter. The adapter meets the Department of Energy 6 requirements, the requirement to be efficient in the real power terms and use low idle power consumption. The voltages were all strong and within the USB-C power delivery specification. Next is this 45 watt adapter. This adapter is aimed at more of the travel market with a replaceable AC connector. This is a good option for that side of things, but it is far from the most compact option out there. The adapter has a USB-A port and a USB-C port with a 45 watt output rating capability. The adapter has lots of modes of operation. It can do fixed output voltages per the USB power delivery 3.0 specification. The USB-C port can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts. And it can also deliver a programmable power supply output voltage of 16 volts at up to 45 watts. So this should charge most phones, basically. The cost for this adapter is $38, which is reasonable, but those little AC replacement things are an extra cost. The power does renegotiate on plug and unplug of either port. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 56 watts, which is an okay overload limit. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is quiet and low. It shows they know how to do this right. The general performance of this adapter is bad when taking into context the lack of power factor correction. The power factor on this adapter is bad, like the dual 60 watt, but it is also a lower wattage adapter, so this is somewhat expected. But we'll see in the comparison that it still doesn't stack up to where it should be. The adapter meets the Department of Energy 6 requirements the requirement to be efficient in real terms of power and 
the idle use. The USB voltages were all good. Okay, on to the big one, and a totally different style of adapter. Just to mix things up, I decided to throw in this one. This is the 180 watt energy laptop power adapter. This thing is covering the larger side of things. And here, finally, we see cardboard for a box, but still lots of plastic wrapping. The adapter obviously has only one output voltage, 19.5 volts, but it does have lots of power, and there's lots of tips in there for various laptops. And it has a little cardboard card that says, you'll get whatever tip you need. Free tips. You think they can help me with a tip on gardening? The power cord is also interchangeable for whatever country you need. The power adapter is actually above the rating of my load bank for overload. I set it to 200 watts and it didn't flinch at that. The price point of this adapter is around $100. Expensive, but not crazy for what you are getting. When we take a look at the data for this one, we finally see something nice. No red. This adapter obviously has power factor correction and the numbers all look pretty good. The efficiency isn't the highest on the market, but it provides good, clean power. Even when the adapter is in the non-PFC mode, the electrical harmonics aren't bad. Here are the weights for these adapters. Overall, these adapters are on the heavier side and in general are not the most compact. The 180 watt laptop adapter is up there with the 200 watt USB desktop adapters as it should be. The smaller wattage adapters are larger than their Anchor 65 or 45 watt Nano 2 counterparts and that higher weight doesn't get you any more performance. So is it just more plastic again? Or the numbers we don't have like mean time before failure, MTBF, are maybe much better than the others. The positives. These adapters all have safety listings for various markets. The US and Canada safety listings are split between TUV Rhineland and Underwriters Laboratory. The idle power consumption on these adapters is amazing. The extremely low idle power consumption and also clean power makes them stand out a bit among most of the lower power market competition. These adapters all have the DOE 6 mark for the 115 volt market and all of them met that efficiency and idle requirement with ease. The real power efficiency of the USB adapters is very high and the laptop adapter is good. The negatives. Begin rant mode here. The adapters come wrapped in more single use plastic than a container of saran wrap. This is nice you can see the product in the little window, but very wasteful on all but the laptop adapter, which is in a very nondescript cardboard box. This too did have lots of plastic baggage though. The USB adapters didn't have power factor correction, my old friend. And in the case of these energy USB adapters, they had some of the highest peak current usage and lowest power factors I have seen from a USB adapter. So the quality is all in to crush the government requirements set by the manufacturers, but it isn't in to make good use of the AC power. 4 amp peak current is ridiculous ridiculous for a small adapter. The issue here is the efficiency numbers look great on a test rig, but if you throw in some real world wiring and outlets and breakers and power strips, etc., these adapters become less efficient than a power factor corrected model. These are winning the Department of Energy game, but the power quality score is a bit more robust and they won't be taking home any crowns in this game. The laptop adapter did have active power factor correction and it helps immensely, but it still isn't the best implementation, so the numbers are a bit lower on that device. I am being very critical of these devices, because that long history with Delta power supplies all over the packaging. That history means I expect the best, so take my negatives with a grain of salt. Energy isn't that bad. Okay, rant mode end, semicolon. When we take a look at the overall data for these power adapters, we can see that the energy takes a reasonable spot for the single port USB-C adapter, but takes the lower spots for the multi-port options. The 43 watt is not up to the task of the anchor offering, and the 63 watt is, well, a solidly poor performer in terms of power quality. The 60 watt single port is okay. For the laptop power adapter, it still falls short of the USB competition, but it is hanging on to the laptop power adapter competition as it's near the top. The OEM 180 watt Dell adapter wins though. When looking at the idle graphs, these are excellent. The low THD, good filtering, and very low idle power consumption puts these in a great spot. Even the 180 watt laptop adapter is sipping power at idle. This is impressive and really the biggest win for these adapters. They can sit plugged in and not consume much at all and can do so without making much noise. When looking at the active power graph, we see things start to fall apart, with these adapters falling mostly to the lower area of the chart. The dual port USB-C adapter is really surprisingly low given the size of the adapter. It should be better than this, but it isn't. The laptop adapter pops out with the power factor correction, but remember this is only above 40 watts, so it's typical for these, but it's really not bad. These energy adapters are interesting. As a fake newcomer to the market, see, they're really delta on the box, I expect them to be amazing. In terms of charging and USB output, they are not bad. They will safely charge many devices. They're also great at idle power consumption, take safety listings seriously, and I bet will have reasonable reliability. Where they start to falter is the active power quality on the main side for the USB adapters. They essentially game the system to get the best real power efficiency
efficiency, but lack to stand out from the competition. Anchor is beating them at the same price point for the 45 and 65 watt categories. Not to say that Anchor hasn't done bad either. The Duo is a skip. The single port is actually okay. The laptop adapter is a different beast, but it was fun to throw in for the comparison. Delta, I mean Energy, can obviously make good power adapters with the laptop brick, so I'd like to see them make a lower power adapter that beats everyone else. They probably have the most pedigree to do so. I may have been a bit harsh, but I also have very high expectations for energy. We will see what the future brings. If we let the data talk, there aren't any wins here, but the laptop adapter is a solid choice for a replacement since the original was probably made by Delta anyway. Time to apply the stickers. They're all tested and on the database. Search for energy on the pqs.app page and compare them all. Thanks for watching. Next week, I'll be looking at some of these 140 watt PD 3.1 power adapters. I have the Ugreen offering here as well, and we'll see how this one compares and there may be a surprise performer in the mix. There's a calendar on the website linked in the description of upcoming videos, so check it out. I have many more of these adapters, so thanks again, and bye.